here. Welcome to the seat. Let's get creative. The first thing you need to do is cut a block of clay reasonable size piece of clay off this block of air dry clay and I always wrap up what I'm not using and cover it so that it's not drying out while I'm not while I while I don't need it. This block of clay now we squeeze I will squeeze between my both hands and turn it into a round ball of clay. Keep going until it's nice and round and smoothish. Using your fingers, you can smooth over any cracks. Pat it, roll it on the chopping board until you have a nice round smooth ball right that looks pretty good i place it in one hand with the thumb of the other hand push a hole into the middle of this ball like so now you don't want to go right through if you do go too far and it feels very thin here at the bottom, there is a way to fix it. What you can then do is take a, a little peanut size piece of clay from the block in the packet, turn that into a little round ball Roll between the palms of your hands like that. Wet it, or you can use the slurry that we made earlier and pop it into the bottom of your pinch pot and then just press gently to give that a little more thickness. And there you have it. So there's about one centimetre of clay in the bottom there, and that's exactly what you want. Now, place it back in the palm of one hand, thumb goes back in, fingers on the outside, and now you're gently going to squeeze, rotate, squeeze, rotate, squeeze and rotate. And you start at the as low as you can, going right around and then coming up, slowly coming up. And it's all about feeling the clay. You don't even have to look at what you're doing. You can look away, close your eyes, whatever, and just feel the thickness of the clay between your fingers. What you're trying to achieve is an even thickness all the way around. So if you feel a thicker area, give that a little more squeeze. And if it's thin somewhere, leave it alone. So just keep going around, around and around, opening up, making it turning this into more of a bowl shape. Try not to work on the rim here, leave that alone. And if it starts to open up and widen like a bowl shape, please just bring it back in. Squeeze that back to a small opening. Put your thumb back in, keep working, around and around you go. And you can, you really need to just take your time on this. 
slow it down and do a good job. Don't rush it. Just enjoy the process of squeezing out the clay so that it's the same thickness all the way around and from bottom to top. Okay, so you'll keep going with that until you have an object that looks like this. So this ball of clay is enough to make a pinch pot this size. And as I said before, just take your time, just slow it down and really feel the clay. Feel for the thicker areas and give them a little squeeze where it's very thin, then I suggest you leave it alone. And eventually you should get a pinch pot this size. And that's the pinch pot. Now you can turn your little pinch pot into a flameless candle holder. I'm happy with the thickness, the wall thickness of this pinch pot. I would say that it's no more than half a centimeter thick, this wall. This wall. I have pinched the edge a little thinner so that it doesn't look too chunky. And if you do find that you get cracking around the top edge here, it's because that top edge dries faster than the rest of the pot. And the slurry that we made earlier is a perfect remedy for that situation. If you just use some of this slurry and rub it around the top edge here or into the area, the problem area where there's cracking, that will help to fill, fill in cracks and smooth them out. Just use your fingers, run your fingers, tips around the edge and smush the slurry into any cracky areas, any cracking areas like that. So just smoothing the slurry in. And if worst comes to worst, um, you can also use the needle to cut around the top to take out any problem areas. So it's just, just a case of slicing little pieces of clay away if you think they're going, they're too difficult to, to um, fix, just slice it off using that needle out of your pottery toolkit. Okay, so now that I have finished making the pinch pot, I'm going to use a plastic straw to make holes around the pot. So with a pair of scissors, what I would do is cut on an angle several little, a couple of centimeters off the straw at a time, like that. Okay, taking one of these little straws, push it into the wall of the, the outside of your pinch pot. Good idea to support with the other hand on the inside while you're pushing from the outside towards the inside. And I'm winding, winding that, rotating that straw in so that it goes through to the inside. And I would just keep going and pull it right through to make a nice clean hole like that. I've made several of these because sometimes the clay gets stuck in there, um, which of course you can push out using the needle, but it's just a good idea to have a, some spare ones lying around. 
if you can't be bothered cleaning out the straws. So now you can go around the pinch pot just like that, you see, it fills up. <laughs> and make holes anywhere you like. And that, of course, is going to let the light shine through from your flameless candle. So just keep going. You could make a pattern with the holes. You could just go around and do one line right around. You could do vertical. You could cover the entire uh, pinch pot with lots of holes. It's up to you. Just have fun. Make lots of little holes so that the light can shine through. And that's going to then become your little flameless candle holder. Also, when you have finished putting all the holes in where you would like them, it's not a bad idea to hold the pinch pot and just gently drop it on the wooden cutting, wooden tray, so that you have a flat bottom and it doesn't roll roll on your tabletop or wherever you're going to display your candle holder. And that's, that's how you make a flameless candle holder.